Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Okay. All right. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to come here and worship you, God. I pray that you fill this room with your spirit and that we just absorb what our speaker uh, tells us today. In your most glorious name I pray. Amen. I am guilty, ashamed of what I've done, what I've become. These hands are dirty, I dare not lift them up to the Holy One.
Hello? Hi, oh, that's very loud. Hey, um, <clears throat> so let me pray for us to get started. Would you pray with me? Father, Son, and Spirit, thank you so much for this place and the opportunity that we have to gather together to hear your word spoken. I pray that you would prepare our hearts to hear it, that we would be good soil. Um, <clears throat> I pray that you would speak by your Holy Spirit through Luke and that we would hear the truth who is your Son, and it's in his name we pray. Amen. Uh, would you guys please help me welcome my, my good friend Luke Sadler. Uh, yeah, I'm Luke Sadler. I, I do Young Life uh, here in the area, and so I've met some of you guys through that, football practices and things like that. Uh, been here before. I'm usually wearing ripped denim um, and or, or putting down fat rhymes. Uh, but today I wanted to share a little bit with you about love. And so, first of all, if you want to know anything about what I love, you've got to meet uh, two of the three people uh, that I love the most. And so I think there's a picture that I emailed. Boom. Happened. Look at that. Married out of my league. Gentlemen, that is the goal. Out of your league. Uh, and we did that. Look at that guy. That's Micah. Uh, and uh, he's got, he's representing Tennessee. That was when we beat Georgia. That was a good day. Um, that's, that's good. Um, but Jess and Micah, I love them so much. I love Jess because, uh, she, for a number of reasons, A, she's my wife, B, she's an amazing cook, C, she's stinking gorgeous, look at that, um, she's my best friend by far. I, I, I can't even list the reasons that I love her, uh, and you, I, we could just be here all day, it'd be great. Uh, and then that's Micah. Uh, and I love him because he's my son, and that's it. That's, that's the only reason. <laughs> There's nothing he can really do for me. Uh, he, uh, he's not very good at having conversations. Uh, he doesn't make me breakfast in the morning. Um, he pretty much just uh, sleeps, uh, cries, uh, laughs and smiles sometimes, which is really nice, and then uses the restroom on himself and on me. Um, and so that is really all he can contribute, but I love him uh, because he's mine. Um, so when we think about uh, love, you know, that's a, a loaded word. Um, you know, sometimes when you think of what is love, maybe you think of, uh, you know, what you see on Mondays and Wednesdays, you know, Man Crush Monday, Woman Crush Wednesday, you know, that's a pretty popular uh, spot where the word love is thrown around. Uh, there's also music, you know, when you think of what is love. Um, and I think I sent a song in. This might be a little bit before your time. Um, but uh, uh, you can give me a thumbs down if it's a go. or a, oh, one, oh, we're going to del delay some time. It's from that movie, A Night at the Roxbury. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie. Will Ferrell, uh, Chris Kattan. It's really old school. If you just... Full blast from the beginning. You don't have to fade it in or anything like that. Yeah, start it over. Start it over. Start it over. Full blast. You don't have to fade it in. I need the. I need the very beginning. You were so close. We were there. What is love? Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, that's good. And we can fade it out. See, that was way too much time for that. Um, but is that it? You know, if that's it, if that's all there is to love, that it's a nice feeling um, that you get, that it's something you can fall into or out of, um, you know, it's, uh, it kind of makes me not so surprised why so many people split up after saying they're in love. Uh, because it's just kind of like, oop, I tripped and I fell out of love, you know, um, and if that's all there is to love, it, it it's, you know, kind of makes us asking, makes us ask the question, is this it? Is that all there is? Uh, and so maybe you're also frustrated with love because sometimes the people who love us are the ones who hurt us the most. And uh, so we think, yeah, I'm, I'm done with love. I've, I've tried that. That didn't work for me. Um, and so what you've kind of maybe set your mind on is as long as I'm happy, as long as I feel good, 
as long as I have minimized pain in my life, then I'm fine. Screw love. Don't need that. Um, however, without love, you're going to miss out on the best things that life has to offer. I promise you, you're going to miss out. Um, and so if you're thinking, uh, you know, that's a little surprising because I feel like I've only gotten the worst that life has to offer because of love. Um, you might be thinking of another song. You know, you might be thinking, what's love got to do, got to do, got to do with it? Um, but uh, instead of another song, contrary to popular belief, uh, love is more than a feeling, more than an emotion. Love is actually a person. Uh, I love in John, in his first letter, uh, in the fourth chapter, he says this. He says um, that God is love. Um, and he says that uh, we love one another because love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. And he says that we love because God first loved us. Um, and so that's a really cool picture. Um, but maybe that doesn't vibe with you. You don't picture God in any sort of real way. Or if he is real, he's definitely not loving. Um, and that might be because you've been hurt by somebody who said that they love God. Or you've just been through something incredibly painful and incredibly hard, and you can't imagine God being real and loving and letting you go through something like that. Um, well, this is what I know. Um, and Jesus said this in his, uh, when he was with all of his friends. Um, he said, I'm going to give you a commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Um, and so he says, hey, uh, love each other as I have loved you. And so it's like, well, how would you love us? Um, and he said, greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. Um, he, so he loved us by showing us the greatest love that there is by laying down his life for us on the cross. Um, and so you think, well, what, what does that mean? Um, why, you know, he, so yeah, he loved the world. Yeah. Well, actually, he didn't just love the world. He loved me. He did it for me. And he loved you. He did it for you. As hard as it is to believe, if you were the only person alive that Jesus would have still died for you because he loves you. It's who he is. He's love. Um, and luckily, he only had to do it once. Um, if, if he had to do it a thousand times over, he would have done it. But once was enough, and it was finished. And so if you're ever tempted to think, uh, that nobody cares about me. Nobody cares about me. Uh, God does. He does. Uh, if you're ever worried that nobody loves you, um, I, I think we can confidently speak that at least one person does. Jesus does. And whenever you're afraid that you're all alone, you're not. Because the Holy Spirit's with you. Because he's everywhere. Paul describes love to the Corinthian church, uh, but whenever we think about knowing God as love, I, I, I kind of like to change the words around a little bit. And so this might sound familiar, but also a little different. Jesus is patient and kind. Jesus does not envy or boast. Jesus is not arrogant or rude. Jesus does not insist on his own way. Jesus is not irritable or resentful. Jesus does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Jesus bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Jesus never ends. Is that the Jesus you picture? When you think you've screwed up too much, uh, do you see Jesus being patient uh, and kind towards you? Or do you think that he's just disappointed in you and mad? Well, it looks like he'd be patient and kind. Uh, when we come across someone who doesn't believe what we believe, uh, and we think of the question, what would Jesus do? Uh, do you picture um, Jesus not being arrogant or rude? Man, that's a hard question. I mean, I feel like a lot of times when I get on my Facebook, um, arrogant and rude are the exact words that kind of go along with people talking about God. So that can be frustrating. So often I've been asked the question, if God is loving, then why did he let sin happen? 
Um, and so I love this line right here where it says, it does not insist on its own way. Love does not insist on its own way, so God did not insist on his own way. He's love, and so he let us decide what we wanted. Uh, he wasn't going to force his way on us. Uh, God, uh, at the end of the day, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Uh, God never ends because love never ends, and God is love. So you're free. You're free to love because you have been so loved. Bob Goff wrote this book called Love Does that I think some of you guys are reading. Uh, and he has a couple quotes that I really, really like. Uh, one is that we will be remembered more for our love than for our opinions. And to give away love like we have a whole closet full of it. I think that will be different for each of us, but I think if we think about it, we can probably come up with something loving that we can do. Uh, and so I want to encourage you out of that love with one last picture. Uh, this is the Jesus Storybook Bible. I read this to Micah when he was, uh, you know, in Jessica's belly. Uh, I don't know how much of it he heard. Um, but uh, I've started reading it to him again now that he's, uh, you know, out of the belly. Um, and I just got to the part about the terrible lie uh, where sin entered the world. Uh, and I love this, uh, this description of love. Uh, and it says... God loved his children too much to let the story end there. Even though he knew he would suffer, God had a plan, a magnificent dream. One day he would get his children back. One day he would make the world their perfect home again. And one day he'd wipe away every tear from their eyes. You see, no matter what, in spite of everything, God would love his children with a never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love. And though they would forget him and run from him deep in their hearts, God's children would miss him always and long for him. Lost children longing for their home. You see, we're at most home when we're in God's love. And we have this hole in our heart that we'll always be trying to fill until it is filled, and until we let it be filled with his love for us. Uh, and John also says in that letter, he says, uh, in perfect love, there is no fear, uh, because perfect love casts out fear, because fear uh, comes with it, uh, this thought of punishment, but in love, there is no punishment, and so uh, if you're afraid of God, if you think God is disappointed in you, or doesn't like you, or is just kind of looking down at you like this, just throw that out. That's the devil trying to give you a messed up, twisted picture of God, God loves you. He's way bigger. He's way bigger than your mistakes. He's way bigger than your screw-ups. He's way bigger than your sin. And he loves you so much. And so if you wonder if God's proud of you, if he has purpose for you, if he cares about you, if he sees what you're going through, he does, he is, and he always will be. Let me pray. God, uh, thanks for loving us. Thanks for amazing people to love like Jessica and Micah. Uh, and thanks for one another uh, that we can love. Uh, thanks for our greatest friends. Uh, but also thanks for the people that are hard to love, the people that remind us of how you love us. Uh, because I'm sure sometimes it might feel like I'm hard to love. Uh, but God, you're so much bigger than that. Uh, you love us with all the ease. Uh, that you see past our failures and shortcomings and you see the best of us. Uh, and so I pray we would live like that, that we would live free um, with the freedom that you've set us free with. In your name we pray, amen. All right, the uh, praise band is going to come up and we are going to uh, sing a song about God's love. If you would stand and worship with us.
jealous for me And love's like a hurricane I am a tree Bending beneath The weight of his wind and mercy And all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory And I realize just how beautiful you are And how great your affections are for me And oh, how he loves us all Jealous for me, loves like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. And all of a sudden, I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory. And I realize just how beautiful you are And how great your affections are for me And oh, how he loves us all Oh, how he loves us How he loves us all Yeah, he loves us, oh, how he loves us, oh, how he loves us, oh, how he loves he loves us, oh. Drawn to redemption by the grace in his eyes. If his grace is an ocean, we're all sinking. And so heaven meets earth like an unforeseen kiss, and my heart turns violently inside of my chest. I don't have time to maintain these regrets when I think about the way he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. He loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. He loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves. Okay, you go ahead. All right, uh, let me pray for us. God, thank you so much for the way you love us. Uh, I pray that you would help us to live in the freedom your love gives us. 
And uh, if our, all love comes from you, then we can give away as much as we have and never run out. I pray that you would help us to do that. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Um, okay, so a couple of announcements. One, the high school student council meeting at lunch today has been canceled. If you are in the high school student council, speaking of the high school student council, you need to stop by the library on the way to break to sign something. Um, also, Young Life is this weekend, this Saturday at my house. You guys are all invited and you should all be there, high schoolers that is. Uh, so the Tennessee plays Alabama at 2.30 rather than, that's right, go Vols. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm going to be honest, I'm real nervous about the game, but that's just the way it is. Season's not going very good. At least we didn't win last weekend, or didn't lose last weekend. I guess we didn't win either. Um, so what, we're going to watch the game at my house. Uh, kickoff is at 2.30. Come over to the house. We're going to watch the game. We're going to have Young Life at halftime. It's going to be great. Everybody's invited. And I, I don't have a TV. Luke is bringing the TV, so don't worry. It's going to be there. All right, go to break. You're dismissed.